Long before archaeologists discovered the tomb of Maketre in Thebes, all the accessible rooms had been plundered and destroyed by tomb raiders. The lead excavator from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Henry Winlock, wanted to get an accurate foreplan of the tomb. In doing so, he made an astonishing discovery. While workers were cleaning out and cataloging the tomb, they stumbled upon a hidden chamber. Inside, they found 24 models, almost perfectly preserved, including a model of an ancient Egyptian combined bakery and brewery, dated between 1981 and 1975 BCE. But why were these models hidden away in the tomb of Maketre? Maketre was a seal bearer or treasurer during the reign of Nepevtre. Known also as Munhotep II, Nepevtre was king during the 11th dynasty and ruled from 2008 to 1957 BCE. He reunified Egypt and brought about a period known as the Middle Kingdom. As a seal bearer, Meketre held one of the most powerful positions in the king's court, garnering immense power and wealth. Given Meketre's courtly position, perhaps the hidden models served him in the afterlife? Or maybe they honored the people who had worked for him? No matter why they were in the tomb, by analyzing them, historians can better understand what jobs Egyptians considered important and necessary, how those jobs were done, and who they were done by. The model depicts the production of two essential elements of Egyptian life and the afterlife, bread and beer. The preservation and hiding of the model and the impressive detail of each individual figure, such as their dynamic poses and the flower covering some of their hands, demonstrate this mythical importance of bread and beer and the people who make them. Bakeries and breweries were fundamental to ancient Egyptian society, with bread and beer served at every meal for both practical and religious reasons. Beer, because of the heating it underwent as it was made, was much safer to drink than water. It was also believed that beer had medicinal properties and was used as an ingredient to cure the sick. In a religious context, beer and other fermented beverages caused drunkenness, which Egyptians believed to be a higher state of mind. During rituals and religious celebrations, people would imbibe alcohol in excess in hopes of communication with the gods. It was so important that the value of goods were calculated by jars of beer. Bread had a similar role as beer in both ritual practices and the economy. It was also a staple because of how beneficial bread was nutritionally, adding protein and starch into the daily diet. As Egyptians continued advancing their technology and society, the process by which they made bread and beer advanced and was refined. Just as these productive processes changed, so did the processes of gendered labor by which bread and beer were produced. To set the stage for what's happening in the model, it's important to understand the aesthetic choices for how men and women were represented. Physically, the female characters can be distinguished by their long hair and dresses. These visual features set them apart from the male figures who wear sarongs and are bald, likely a nod to their working class social status. In Egyptian art, though the positions of the bodies usually conveys the social status of figures relative to each other, this is not the case in the model. Instead, gendered power dynamics are represented through depictions of who performs what labor. The Middle Kingdom saw notable changes to the structure of labor. At first, women were able to occupy professional positions in larger numbers. As time went on, men began to dominate the professional class. They dictated who could and could not be represented in these positions. As such, women were largely confined to domestic labor. This might explain why, in the model, the actual number of women performing tasks is far less than the number of men, with only four out of 17 figures being women. In addition to there being notably less women, these women also performed fewer distinct tasks, with women only performing one out of the eight distinct tasks depicted in the model. Given the patriarchal structure of ancient Egypt, with men dominating social, economic, and political spheres, it makes sense then that labor was divided by gender and would be reflected symbolically in ancient models. Looking at the outer room, the surrounding items and performed tasks indicate that this is the brewery. The first figure, seated at the entryway, is a male guard depicted with a club. That's significant as the only role unrelated to baking and brewing is performed by a man. This shows that gendered labor existed even outside of baking and brewing. 
Furthest from the entryway, we see the figures of a man and two women. As the man uses a pestle to pound grain, two women grind it into flour. A second man proceeds to massage this flour into dough. Then another man adds water to the dough, mashing the mixture with his feet. The liquid is then left to ferment before being poured into the vessels lining the wall of the brewery. Looking now to the inner room of the bakery, we can see that it's divided into two sections. In the section closest to the entryway, we see many tasks repeated, like a man using a pestle to pound grain while two women grind it into flour. There are also additional tasks, such as two men mixing dough and another man preparing ovens for baking. In the adjacent section, we also see two men shaping bread, carrying bread to an oven, and again operating stoves and using pestles. As these figures demonstrate, the male figures are actively engaged in tasks, and some appear to be progressing between these tasks. In contrast, the female figures are notably fixed into their respective tasks, positioned in a manner that restricts movement. This could be a quirk of the scene, though if it's an accurate representation, it could also indicate the fixed position of women's labor in Egyptian society. Ultimately, Egyptian art, like the model bakery and brewery, represent an idealized view of society, its practices, and the division of labor. The division of labor, as depicted, emphasizes the limitations on what jobs women could perform and how these limitations were not equally put upon men. Therefore, although the model proves helpful in understanding ancient Egyptian culture, it's difficult to say how much it represents actual practices. While it might show an inequality in women's access to labor, it could also be a symbolic depiction of Egyptian gendered labor dynamics specific to the Middle Kingdom rather than ancient Egypt as a whole. Now, it's important to note that the model bakery and brewery set from the tomb of Meketret isn't the only of its kind. Models of this sort became pretty common by the time the Middle Kingdom rolled around. Previously, in the late Old Kingdom, tombs had included limestone statuettes of people engaged in activities, such as food preparation and other types of work. By the Middle Kingdom, models made of wood, a less costly material for ancient Egyptians, were made in larger numbers than their previous limestone counterparts and placed in the burial chamber to furnish provisions for the deceased in the afterlife. And symbolically providing for the tomb owner's needs, the models function in much the same way as painted scenes did on the walls of tomb chapels. This model of a weaving shop was also found in the tomb of Meketri. Though it's smaller in size, the weaving shop is a more explicit example of gender segregation. Note that there are no depictions of men in the weaving shop, showing us that textile production would have been a woman-dominated profession. In comparison, the production of beer and bread, as shown in the bakery brewery model, was more male-dominated and women seemed to have specific fixed tasks. So, why should we look to these models? Why are they significant? Perhaps, more importantly, what do the McKittrin models tell us about labor and work production and its relationship with gender? Using these ancient models, we gain access to what life may have looked like for Egyptians in the Middle Kingdom, especially regarding how labor and gender intertwined. From bread and beer making to the weaving of cloth, a person's gender influenced what kind of work they would do and in what capacity, essentially shaping their daily life.